so much to talk about as we are entering into a new year and understanding just where we stand and listening to the president's um, State of the Union address concerning that we would pick one person, one black woman, one parent in poverty and grant them opportunity that so many don't have. And I think we know, we know what's happening in our local communities when our children are not being educated and we understand the impact of children not being educated because quite frankly, you don't have a safety factor when you are undereducated. When they see young black men, it's obviously they feel a threat and they're killing our young black men and women. We shouldn't say that anybody without skills or people with skills can engage the community and, you know, kind of like bring attention to what we need to bring attention to, what we're not doing. And the mere fact that we're engaging around the internet and using this as a real tool to reach out and help support other people, other adults, other children, whoever, you know, it's really about what, what do you know, what you've been through and what can you share? I do happen to know about public schools and it's really crazy that, you know, you know, we have a president who let a few people out of jail, but think about the mass incarceration of all of our people. Let's think about, let's understand what's happening in the public school system when your child doesn't get a passing grade, where that student may end up. And we do know across this nation, when you walk out your front door, you see homeless people. You see people that are undereducated and you understand what you can access when you don't have a certain level of education. It's just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of dumbfounded, actually. I don't understand how people allow their children to go to school for the number of days that are required in a compulsory year and then only to have them get the letter grade of F. And, you know, I'm really concerned about what's going on in Sacramento around the Roberts Family Development Center, simply because Daryl Roberts does provide the level of support to the community. He's doing the work that the school district should be doing or the County Office of Education should be doing with black children. And then they're trying to say that he somehow inappropriately used the money. Well, let's talk about who's really inappropriately using money in America, in the public education system, because we all understand where our children are or where our children are not. We all understand that it's impossible to advocate for a child who is below grade level in the 12th grade and perhaps doesn't have the ability to change their status. Because we all know that there's no ketchup in America. Ah, ketchup is like a pun, ketchup. No, you don't get to catch up. If you're behind, that's where you stay. And it's so unfortunate that there's not enough support in the classroom to redirect children's behavior because we know that our children are off tasks. So what they do is start documenting the behavior of off-taskness. What is off-taskness? Well, you know, off-taskness is your child is trying to direct something for themselves and trying to direct other children. And they don't know how to direct them. I mean, you know, everyone is in charge of their own behavior. But when you go in a classroom and you're disruptive, then you're a problem and they get rid of you. And not only do they get rid of you, they get rid of your whole family if your parent doesn't have basic skills enough to generate redirection for you. It is just a real concern because, you know, people, black people don't like special education. And quite frankly, you know, special ed is a public, it is a public service. It is utilized to um, provide additional support for families who need additional support. And uh, what we need to understand is about, you know, education is the flexibility in the classroom and the flexibility of the provider to provide services to ensure that all children have access. Access is the key word. What does access look like? How is access actually provided? And that's what we need to know. We need to know what it means, public education. And we need to understand that how much legislation is around public education and how 
our public programs are actually supported. They're, uh, they are supported. Quite frankly, they're just supported by our tax dollars. And that's what we call public policy. Public policy, well, let's talk about what is public policy. Let's talk about, let's talk about the caucus and how the Democrats caucus and what that means and, and you know, and how that actually, I mean, I actually participated in Sacramento one time and didn't really even understand what the merit of what I was participating in, but I did and got to vote for people who would, I thought it was just representing delegates who would go to, you know, to the election or go to, you know, they're not well ever, whatever it happens, you know, when they choose the person who's going to represent as president of the United States. Every person in America gets to participate in this process if they're an American citizen, if you were born here. But you don't participate if you don't, if you've never done it, and if your family's never done it, something you never do. We are stuck in this quagmire of Groundhog Day, just consistently repeating negative stuff that's not happening as a something functional. I don't understand. I don't understand how it is that we are in the public education system. We live in America. We're African Americans or we're Americans of African descent or however you want to really call it. My skin is chocolate. And I do say chocolate because it looks kind of chocolate. And you don't get this color unless you have some, you know, some mixed races in your background. But, you know, it's concerning. It's concerning to me that we, the people, do not have a team to play on. It's concerning to me that Black people are not conversating, or even if they are. It was so powerful to see yesterday the Black Congressional Congress members, the CDC, they had a leadership emergency workshop and it was a workshop because they were really talking about where they are in their elected positions but where we are as a people and concerning that you know what do we do it's just like you know going back to the Roberts Family Development Center in Sacramento knowing that Darrell Roberts has a freedom school he has after school program he was getting ready to open up a teen center because you know the teen centers in Sacramento the youth community centers really don't serve the neighborhood. It's like they built the one on 24th and Medigan, and it's got a beautiful pool, but black people can't get in there and reserve the room. You know, if you reserve the room, you have to have, you know, money or, you know, it's not for community events, although we do have a community person that participates in organizing it out there. It is someone from the community, but it is also a process in which you, you know, establish what you want to do in the city anybody can use it and pretty much they are using the resource that was created for and based on the number of people living in poverty the activities are not around the people living in poverty the location of the service is located in a high poverty neighborhood that's what we need to understand they locate these resources in the highest poverty neighborhoods to ensure that they have adequate funding it's about yeah. adequate funding you know, and have the ability to provide that resource for the public. And so, you know, that school over there on, uh, I say Edward Kimball and Cesar Chavez, that school that has sometimes upwards of 1,200 students on one city block, that school that has the largest population of K-3s and 4-6s, that program that's producing all the poverty in Sacramento, that's what we need to concern ourselves about because it really is about the foundational start. I don't know if they have a Head Start program over there, but I do know that, no, I don't think they do. Well, maybe they do, but they're not addressing all the students' needs. We, the people, need to measure the maintenance of effort based on Brown versus the Board of Education, based on the activities of inclusion. That's what I'll say. Because based on that activity of inclusion, we really can't measure the maintenance of effort that comes to people who look like us. I'm not saying that the services don't exist. I'm not saying that you can't get a quality education. 
by participating in those federal schools as your president called it. But I'm saying those federal schools are the federal programs that are implemented to protect your rights as an individual being a black person. And I'm saying that as a black female, as a single parent, as a widow, I'm saying that we the people are just not focused around the implementation of public services and the outcomes because we have no maintenance of effort. We have no, no way to measure the monetary benefit because to our community because it's our children that are out there. It's your children that are providing services to us and that's just real. So how do we change this? It's a problem, but how do we change this? We change this by educating yourself. Each one, reach one, teach one. I'm trying to teach. And in order to teach, you have to have people that are paying attention. And that's just real. And because who takes the time? And who wants to know? That's really what it is. Who cares about public education? I tell you, black people should care. Because black people need to know that they're the hardest. They need to understand that a lifetime of ignorance brings a lifetime of wealth for some people. And a lifetime of ignorance brings a lifetime of hardship for some people. And without knowledge, there is no power. You have to take a moment to protect your own interests. You have to know that whatever happens to you, that you can't leave loose ends. You have to go back. Fighting the battle means the completion of the process. And, you know, I'm not finished because my children haven't had children yet. My children are not independent adults, yet they are independent as an adult. But, you know, the opportunity for growth and development, I mean, you know, with all these opportunities that are touted in the public's diaspora, we should really understand. Do we have opportunities? Yes. Are we participating? Yes. Do we have black lawyers? Yes. Do we have black judges? Yes. Do we have black everything? Yes. Do we have a way to oversee the public dollars that are coming from our community to invest and reinvest in our community? No. The word is no. There is nowhere where we are sharing our concerns locally. And that's why, you know, you have to wonder and, and question when people are prohibited or prevented from purchasing black media or black news or, you know, and then how do we come together around the concerns of public interest as a community? I ask these questions simply because I haven't found that yet. I ask these questions simply because I am so grateful for the new media and the new stream that I can log in and have a participation at any time, except for when they choose it, you won't have the ability to participate in the conversation. America the beautiful, America the great. America where you have a choice to participate. And it is your choice. But know this, if we keep turning away from our personal responsibility, because Individually, it's mine, and individually, I, I mean nothing. But united, we mean something. So therefore, we have to get out and educate one another. We have to participate. We have to know what's going on. We have to understand the importance of the game show host presenting in front of Congress last night and swaying the narrative. There was one Black single parent there who talked about, and he talked extensively about opportunity to learn as if the only opportunity would come from her being placed in a better school but not from demanding accountability from the people who are being paid to provide that public service in the neighborhood where she lives no honey that's just a free check a free check and a waste of taxpayer dollars why do taxpayers have to pay for allocations of public services when the public service provider is not an adequate public service provider. They're just entitled somehow to just get that free check. Welfare, it can be many different ways. We need to understand public services for what they truly are. 
All public schools have to have public buildings that are built. They have to have, you know, when you start looking at the big picture and looking at the buildings, think about the contractors that put the mirrors in, that put the windows in, that put the doors in, that put the hinges in. All these are contracts provided by the United States citizenry. So whether it's state, county, local, federal, doesn't really matter. All those dollars go into pot. And then we build services. And we have services. Everybody is paying for those services. The outcomes is what we don't understand. We don't understand how black children just can't benefit or seem to not benefit or fail to thrive or fail to learn or fail to fail. And why is the letter grade of F so acceptable in the black community? I don't know. But this video has to be about asking the questions as to why we fail to engage ourselves in public policy. Why is it that so few are engaged in internet and access? We, we all know the power behind this tool. It is a tool. For initially, I want to say initially when I started getting involved in, in you know, online and understanding, it was really kind of, mm, I really didn't, really wasn't engaged in it because I could see that people could see two way and send you a picture of the private thing as if that was something that was okay. It's not okay. And they know who you are. Don't be stupid. They know where you live. Don't be ignorant. Don't do things online that you don't want anybody to know because you'll be really stupid. Because they are just making a collection of data and they are storing it in an address online that documents who you are. And they really wanna get a clear picture of who you are as an individual so they can perhaps outthink your mind, but they're not godlike and they're not gods, but they may believe that they're gods because they can do a lot of the things that gods may do simply because they're operating in the cloud. But understand just because they're operating in the cloud doesn't give them the independent power, not God. No one has God's power because no one knows how long you're going to be here except for him. No one knows what you're going to do except for him. And no one knows if you're willing except for him. All that pushing comes from the unknown, the universe. And the universe is so powerful. We, on the other hand, have chosen to ignore our godlike powers, living to our fullest extent making a choice to make that decision to stand up. It really is what it is. You really have the ability to question what, what's happening with you and why it's happening with you. But if you choose not to, know that it stands for you to be defeated. You can't make, you have to make a choice to make a decision to stand up for yourself every day and in that standing up perhaps you will be saved because if god has something or the universe has something for you to complete guess what you will complete it well that's just real you'll be here as long as he wants you to be here to serve whatever purpose we're supposed to serve and that's the universe and it doesn't have to be a him or a her it's the universe has created a process and you know when you're going the right way because every door is open Ching, 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 ching. You don't have to worry about a thing because it is provided. You just have to keep operating under faith. You have to keep operating under hope. And we have to keep operating as we are a people. And we have to find a better way to stand together. I think it's critical that black people in Sacramento stand up now for Roberts Family Development Center. And regardless of Gary Roberts has great communication skills or he's has limitations, we all do. But the work that he was willing to do, the work that he had the ability to coordinate for our children is critical. It's critical and it's important. And as we are a people, that conversation needs to come into play because what he's doing for our children in Sacramento, nobody else is doing. The county's not doing it. Oh, 
Margaret Fortune, she was able to position herself to do some of that work. It's critical work around black student achievement, which is not happening. So what? We have gifted and gate children. We always had gifted black children. They can only thrive in an environment that's positive and that's supportive. And even if they're not gifted, every child is precious. And so all children need proper support when in their formidable years, when you're forming the foundations that children need, you have to measure the benefit and the progress of this child. So you don't have to keep continue because once a child learns, they learn. They don't need to have it continued. I mean, you know, how many years do we have to have knowing about what black history was in California? Because, you know, California seems to want you to really know that you came here as a slave. And I don't totally agree with that. I think blacks were here before slaves happened. That's how come they have, you know, pieces of Africa or things that happened in Africa found in Mexico or, you know, under the, under the earth here. You don't know. We don't know we weren't here. And I'm not trying to prove, I'm not trying to go back and, and know about what was happening, you know, during the King days. I want to talk about what's happening today. But I know about what's happening today. And in the year of 2020, I know that it is possible to get your children through the public education system as, as you know, your current president would call it, uh, what do you call it? Federal schools, knowing that federal programs and federal regulations and the constitution the United States Constitution gave me the right to have the freedom of speech, to have the freedom of religion, to have the freedom of expression, to know and have the freedom of liberty. And just to know all of those basic freedoms. But guess what? You're not entitled to them. Because if someone is managing your behavior, you have no freedom. And if, you're, if that's all you get is from an offer of faith, which would be a free and appropriate public education, all you get is a modified behavior and you don't have any of the basic skills to exist in society, then I feel sorry for you. But that doesn't stop you from voting. If you have a clear record and you can vote, you're not a felon, didn't wind up being a felon, you do too. Does anybody really understand what that means? I was helping a young man and he was in the 12th grade. He found me by attending a meeting and he says, well, aren't you the lady that I hear talking at the board meetings all the time? I said, yeah. He says, well, can you help me? Because I think that they're gonna come after me. I'm in 12th grade and I have 25 credits. And he said, nobody's ever helped me before. He said, but I hear you and can you help me? And I said, sure. And so, you know, I found out about him. I, I requested some information, come to find out that he was in special ed. But guess what? His whole case had been transferred to the hearing office where Mr. Brown is right now. And he was really getting no services. There was no managing, no maintenance of effort. He was just there and he was in school. And as long as he didn't act out, he was fine. Well, comes to find out, you know, okay, someone challenged him or he got in trouble and he said some things to the principal when he was trying, when, when, when they were trying to restrain him. And they said that he made a terrorist threat. What is a terrorist threat? I will F you up. That's what it was. And he was facing five years in a felony, but he was a special education student. He did have some behavioral issues. I don't know where the behavior, I mean, you know, I think a lot of the behavior issues come from just wanting to be independent, wanting to have freedom of thought, but you don't have, you don't control anything when you can't pay your own bills and you can't pay your own way. And I think that that's where a lot of the people are just dumbfounded. But I'm not gonna take my life because I'm not in fear. And that's just real. But a lot of people are fearful of what they don't understand. They don't understand that They have opportunity to change and change is, you know, this is how we live. Every day you learn something new, but every day you will be faced with a challenge. The challenge will be how you will overcome it. 
because the pathway is there for you to learn a new skill, trials and tribulations. It's so critical right now that we learn to come together, that we learn to support one another, that we are not the crabs in the barrel and that we're not trying to tear down one another because that's, I find out a lot on my Facebook and my stream of friends that there are a few people that like to tout themselves as being so much more better than others, but it's not about them. This is about life. This is about our grandchildren. This is about our future. Can we stand together and hold public policy accountable to ensure that all children or all people have access? Will we just keep turning a blind eye to the homeless? Will we just keep turning a blind eye to the children? That's my question. We all are accountable as human beings, as humans. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. Matters the importance of being in America and living as an American and understanding freedom and understand I don't wish to go back where I had no rights. I barely have any rights now. People, because you qualify for Medi-Cal can do things to you and you really don't know if they're doing these things to help you or doing these things to help yourself themselves because it really is a matter of oversight and it really is a matter of rules because people can do anything to you. They can say you have cancer, but they don't necessarily have to prove you have cancer, but they can do the mastectomy. They can do the biopsy and still not have enough evidence and not have to show, but not give you a right to a second opinion because you only qualify for, you know, the low income portion, or they can pull your teeth and not finish your teeth. They, I mean, you know, totally, if you qualify for a service, then there doesn't have to be any kind of oversight or monitoring on the people who are providing you a service. There we are. Therein lies the problem in the public school system. No requirements, total flexibility. Well, look out world. You're especially the black world, black people are on the bottom. Don't kid yourself. Failure is an option every day, not just someday, but every day. And if your parent is not aware of what the rules say, then you get no benefit. You get absolutely nothing. And the proof is in the data, not just in the state of Nevada, but in the state of California, not just in the state of California, but you better go back on the East Coast and look at Philadelphia and how Philly was trying to pass rules that if you have a behavior record, that somehow when that behavior record follows you to court, you get additional time. You just might be a lifer before you even get out of high school. And that's all based on public opinion. Someone who doesn't even have basic skills who is analyzing someone who has no skills. Where have we gone to in America? Why is this so disgusting? It's disgusting what they're doing to our children and we're allowing it. That's why I'm on, and I, that's why I'm going to put it on my Facebook and put it on my YouTube, because we all need to wake up. It's time for a wake-up call. This is 2020. It's time for a wake-up call for Black people to understand that we advocate for each other just because we are one another. And it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, you can only follow the rules and apply the rules to you as you were told and instructed to. So as far as Daryl Roberts using some of his dollars, you mean to tell me he didn't work and employ himself to be able to, he's been doing this for years. So he didn't have enough money in the bank to cover a meal, to celebrate his employees, to, to uh, have a workshop or provide a service to engage his community. He couldn't use that money to do that. Are you telling me that, you know, the money that he may have used to pay people and even though the money was satisfied and established for the migrant, that they don't move funds all the time, they move funds all the time. But why target Darren Roberts as if he was in control of that? Because he wasn't. Someone tried to support him. And maybe they didn't understand the rules or, the, or tell them. And if they have a set of buildings out there for migrant workers, why aren't those buildings being converted to put the homeless in because Sacramento has a huge problem with the homeless and they're not converting people over to those units where they can perhaps have opportunities to sustain themselves. 
This is all what you need to talk to your county board of supervisors about, all what you need to have a conversation with your local city officials, people that you elected. Because the work that Daryl Roberts is doing is the work that the city is not doing, is the work that the state is not doing, is the work that the county is not doing. And our children have a right to have some quality services. And I suggest that every Black person in Sacramento that has a voice needs to stand up. Irregardless, I mean, I've met with Daryl. He's not my best friend. But irregardless, I know the work that he was doing and the criticalness of the work. That's what I know. And irregardless, I challenge every person who has a voice and can ensure that access remains for our children, that we cannot afford to lose what he's doing for our community. And perhaps you need to volunteer there and help provide additional support for the people that need support. That's what I'll say. So I'm going to end this stream for now. Going to truly upload it as soon as it gets finished. Uh, uh, as soon as it finishes, you know. As soon as they contact me and let me know that it's online, because that's where I have to, I'm learning. And as I'm learning, I'm encouraging other people to learn too. learn how to share your concerns and hold the system accountable because without our voices, we can change absolutely nothing. I don't need anyone else talking about the condition of children who look like my children, except for someone who looks like me and someone who's, who's lived the life and experience the journey. But even if you're living a life, you really still don't understand the journey unless you're willing to do the work because the fight is real. We are fighting for resources, but guess what? We all understand that many of the people that we expect to speak for us just may just be who they are, entertainers. Entertaining the system and entertaining America. They're not the ones that you expect to do the work. If you're looking for the ones you're expecting to do the work, please look in the mirror. Please look in the mirror and please call yourself out and ask yourself what more you can do as an individual, as a child in this universe, to stand up for the children who are not born yet, or even if they have been born, that are in situations that are so horrible that they will be willing to take their lives. I just can't imagine a baby taking their lives but it's happening every day in our community. You know why? Because these children cannot live like what's on television. That is a fantasy. What is that? Dick Gray used to say it all the time. Dick Gregory said, tell lie vision. It's a lie that it's telling you. And then your, your vision is corrupted simply because you may not ever live that dream. Your dream is in your box with the people that you love the most, with the people that you should be able to afford to survive, to help sustain their lives. But if you can't, you're willing to do anything because you created that life. But guess what? What you're willing to do may get you in a lot of trouble and you may be sacrificing a freedom. We have to think better and we have to demand more out of the system that proclaims that it is supporting us. We need to demand the same equal access to ensure that we have access to the opportunities. And that, you know, I heard Trump, y'all heard him too, when he said he's gonna put more, more of um, vocational ed uh, programs in the public school system. Well, you know what? We used to have the vocational ed. We used to have home economics. We used to have skills-based support and training, but then we went to this academic side. And everybody's not going to be a doctor and everybody's not going to be a lawyer and everybody's not going to be a politician. Everybody don't have the gift of gab. I got the gift of gab. I understand the concepts that are thrown around in the room. I understand my brother's keeper and how it is a vision of Barack Obama, but not necessarily of the people who live in Clark County, Las Vegas, Nevada, because simply you cannot save just one or two and then tout about how wonderful you are because the system it's like a sieve and it's just leaking everywhere. And most of our children are not getting a basic education. So therein lies the responsibility, oh my goodness, for everyone to wake up. This is 2020 and I'm gonna end this ring for now, but I will be back. If I manage to uh, get more creative, I'll do more creative things. But right now, you have a great day and look forward to talking to you later.